Hi, everyone. My name is Jared Bechtel, and I am the authorized channel partner and certified integrator content and program developer. In short, I work with our certified partners to make sure they're qualified to support you through the whole process of deploying a Wi-Fi or a PoE system from site survey to installation programming into post installation support. So let's dive right into it. Today, we're going to go over uh, what is Wi-Fi and the PoE technology? We're going to look at the system architecture. And into that, we're going to look at what is an integrated lock. After that, we're going to look at the operation narrative. So what you can expect on a day-to-day -day operation of running one of these systems. Next, we're going to look at uh, some of our software partners that we work with. And then finally, give you an insight to uh, what it looks like when it comes to programming one of these lock sets. And then finally, uh, what do you do after this training? So I'm gonna give you some resource tools that are available um, to further your education and support you moving forward. So diving into it, this is what we have here is called a traditional access control system. So with every access control system, you're gonna have a, a access control software that's over there on the left. And then that's going to be networked through your facility. So whether your facility is a building, uh, multiple uh, buildings, maybe a campus or even a city, depending on uh, who you work for, uh, it's all going to have the baseline the same. From there, we're going to narrow our focus to an access control panel that, that is in a building. And we're going to focus in on a door controller that's controlling a specific door. In this case, if you look here, each one of these blue dotted lines, consider these uh, wires that are being ran through your walls, through your ceiling. So at the base, you're going to have a, a, a weekend card reader, right? And uh, that's going to be where you present your access control uh, credential. And then from there, you're going to have that electric strike, uh, or you can have electrified hardware that's going to actually lock. You're also going to have that request to exit. What that request to exit is, that's on the inside of your door. So when you're leaving that uh, door, it's going to shunt the alarm, letting the access control system know that nobody's trying to break in. And then finally, we have the DPS or the door position switch. That's monitoring if your door has been closed or not. So looking at all this with new construction, it's, it's much easier. But when we look at a retrofit application, now you're at the mercy of your building. If it's an older building, it might have asbestos in it. It might have concrete walls. It might have concrete filled door frames. Um, and maybe you just don't have the time to be able to have everything ripped open. It needs to be a quick turnaround. So with that, this is where our Wi-Fi solution really comes into play. So if you see here from the system architecture, you're still gonna have that access control software and that's gonna be networked just like it was before. But the difference is, is if you have existing 2.4 uh, gigahertz wireless network, meaning if you can walk through your facility and you can get online, this lock is going to leverage that existing infrastructure to be able to give you access control. So how it does that is, as you can see, it's utilizing your existing wireless access point. But then if you see the lock itself, it has no wires running to it. So now all you have to do is remove the existing lock and install that new lock, place the batteries inside, program it, and now you have access control on that door. So let's look at this a little deeper. Here we have a side-by-side -side comparison of the two. So when you look at the system architecture, we've talked about the wireless network. Now let's talk about the lock, self, the lock itself. It's an integrated lock set. And what I mean by that is all the components you see on the left side that are around the door are now built into one lock. So starting out with your access control panel and your door controller, now that's built into a controller that's on the back side of the door. So now we're taking away that existing infrastructure that you typically would need. And now all the decisions and the smarts are held in the lock itself. You have your 
card reader, if it's an HID multi-class reader that you have on your wall, that's the exact same reader that you currently have on your integrated lock set. That's gonna come available in uh, mobile ready applications with NFC. You, additionally, you can get BLE or even PIV for those government applications. And then when it comes to the lock itself, so I mentioned an electric strike or an electrified lock body. So here we have a, a mortise lock in this case, and it's electrified, running off of the six AA batteries. And so now this lever is going to be rigid. And when you present your credential to that card reader and you get that green light indicating you've been accessed, that lever is going to unlock for a designated amount of time and allow you entrance into that door location. The request to exit that's typically sitting on the ceiling inside of a room. Now that's built into the inside lever. So when you retract that lever, that's gonna shunt that alarm. And then finally you have your door position switches. So uh, depending on the lock style, it's either gonna be drilled into the side of the door like traditional door position switches or on mortise locks, it's actually gonna be built into the case. So it gives a much cleaner uh, appeal visually. So now that we have the lock body itself, let's talk about what an actual system would look like running. So with Wi-Fi locks, it does have its limitations. One being you cannot force communication. The lock initiates all communication. So in setting up a lock, just traditionally like you would with any access control door, you're gonna go in and you're gonna add your users. These locks can hold up to 10,000 users, depending on the software application. It'll be able to hold any kind of schedules, holidays that you're typically used to doing. It also has a plethora of alarms that you can set. But in addition to that, being that it's a Wi-Fi lock and it wakes up and that lock establishes the communication with your access control system, you set schedules. Typically once or twice a day, the lock will force itself to wake up. So once you make those changes, it's gonna be stored in your access control. And the lock is going to initiate communication, whether it's one of those set timers or it's always gonna wake up if it alarm is triggered. What's it gonna do? It's gonna tell you who it is. It's gonna tell you the battery life of that particular lock. It's gonna tell you the alarm that's going off. And then it's gonna give you the audit trail from the last time it communicated which again is up to 10,000 audits. So it's gonna make that communication using your existing Wi-Fi network. While it's there, it's gonna take those schedules and those users that you added or deleted from that lock and bring it into itself. So one thing with Wi-Fi locks is you cannot force communication. So you cannot have a global lockdown in this situation. We only have the local lockdown uh, using the privacy button, which we're going to get into in a minute. The beauty, though, of running on batteries is if your Wi-Fi network goes down or if the power goes out in your building, all the smarts are in the lock itself. So that means if it just communicated right before the network went down, now it's going to operate as normal. So anybody that's using that door, as long as they have access to that door, they're just going to go through like no, any other day. And then once your Wi-Fi network is back in contact, that lock will wake up and give you all those audits from the last time it communicated. So speaking to the batteries, it's six AA alkaline batteries. Typically we see 14 months to 24 months, but this is highly based off of usage. So being that this uh, lock wakes up on alarms and goes through your wireless network. The more alarms you have set, the more the lock's going to wake up, which means the shorter lifespan. So typically where we see these locks being installed are uh, offices, dorm rooms, copy rooms, anywhere where you currently have an offline keypad lock, for instance, and the code's written on the doorframe. Or maybe you have some offline locks. There are some legacy locks. These are fantastic applications 
because they're typically not going to be changed a lot. So not a lot of alarms. So you're gonna see that light from it. So in a remodel application, that's where this Wi-Fi lock really shines in being able to add existing access control without that heavy lift of all the labor intensive wiring. Next, we're gonna talk about power over ethernet. So power over ethernet is typically a new construction installation. So as you can see here from the system architecture, you're gonna have that access control software. You're gonna have that networked uh, capability going around. But the difference here is this is actually using uh, power over ethernet. So your power and your data are being transferred through that CAT6 cable. So now you're just plugging that right into your network switch. Like the Wi-Fi lock, AES 128-bit encryption is covered for all communication paths through the life of the system. So let's dive in and look at what operating a PoE system would actually look like. So just like your Wi-Fi lock, all the smarts are built into the lock itself. So you're going to be able to have those 10,000 users. You're going to be able to set up those schedules in your holidays. You're going to have those alarms. But now the difference is this is a hardwired system. So now the alarms, you can have every alarm set and it's not going to drain any batteries because it's hard power. This also gives the ability to do a remote lockdown or a remote unlock in addition to having that privacy button. So that privacy button that I keep speaking of, that's on the back cover. So think of a single occupancy bathroom. Everybody has access to this door. I walk up to it, I present my credential, I go into that bathroom, I hit that button, and now it locks all the credentials out from the outside. As soon as I press that lever with that request to exit and open the door, breaking that seal between the door position switch and the frame, now it resets the lock. So when it locks, everybody now has access. This also can be used in a dorm room or a conference room or an office where you don't wanna be disturbed. But all of our locks have key override and they also have override credentials. Think of it as a, a master credential so that if somebody was to get injured or wasn't able to unlock that door, that credential would override that digital deadbolt if you wanna think of it that way. So in this case, it has all these changes. So now you shoot that to the lock and it's instantaneous. Anytime an alarm goes off, the lock again is gonna wake up and say who it is, what alarm is going off in any audit trail since the last time it communicated. And just like our Wi-Fi lock, if your network was to go down or the power was to go out, as long as that lock has some power going to it, whether it's a battery backup, or let's say just your network went down, so the lock still is getting power, all the smarts are in that specific lock, unique to that lock. So it's still going to function as it was last programmed. And as soon as your network is back up and running, it's going to send you all of those audits and any alarms that might have been triggered that it couldn't present to you. So I mentioned that PoE is typically new construction. Not only do we have the locks, but if you look coming down on the left, you, have, you see the three there. So this would be your cable running from your IT closet, running down your door frame to where it needs to go through your door because it needs to be drilled. So we have hinges. This is one of many hinges, but the beauty about this hinge is it's concealed so that when you look at the door when it's open, you don't see any wiring. So you have no idea that there's wires actually running through the door. In addition to uh, the drop cables and the hinges, we have through door cables. So those will come uh, in a door if we spec those for you. They're already pre-installed in that door. So all you have to do is install the lock and then plug that RJ45 or that typical plug you plug into your computer or your printer 
to get internet, you plug that right into the lock and you put that cover on. Here's another example of that privacy button or the shelter in place as we call it lit up. In addition, you, uh, one of the key alarms is if you pull that cover off, you can actually have a tamper set. So every time somebody pulls that cover off, that's one of the alarms that you could get that somebody's trying to tamper with that lock. So a key benefit with power over ethernet or PoE for short, we have a graph here. So typically $28 a year for one standard access control door. But by utilizing the power savings of power over ethernet, you can get that down to $2 a year. So if, if your building is trying to get LEED certification points or um, going green is something that's important to you, uh, this will aid in that effort you guys are trying to obtain. So here's a little cheat sheet. Uh, I'll leave this up if you wanna take a screenshot or a quick snapshot, but uh, really here's just the key highlight. So with the Wi-Fi, this is true Wi-Fi running on your existing 2.4 network. Being that it's battery powered, you cannot force lockdowns. You only have that local lockdown or the privacy or the shelter in place. But when it comes to a retrofit application, this is your lowest cost to get access control because all you're doing is removing your existing hardware and putting on an integrated lock that has everything you need. So we see this ideally for dorm rooms, for offices, classrooms, single occupancy bathrooms, like I said, and really anywhere that has a keypad now that you cannot get that audit from. So the hardware types, you're gonna see mortise, cylindrical, rim and mortise exit and multipoint, which we'll get into here shortly. And then jumping over to the power over ethernet. Again, you're getting those cost savings, but it's hardwired. So now you get those instantaneous remote unlocks, lockdowns, you get those instantaneous uh, credential changes. So if this is on an exterior door and uh, you have a situation where you have to let somebody go or you need that instantaneous change, uh, that can be made right away. And then you have the cost savings uh, through the uh, power savings that I've spoken to. So like before, we see these on offices, classrooms, dorm rooms, exterior doors, IT closets where you want that higher level of security, med rooms, uh, things like that. And then again, with the hardware types, the same, the mortise, the cylindrical. The beauty about this product is that the components are universal. So rather than just looking at the words, we have a visual representation. So we have a mortise lock, a cylindrical, rim exit. The beauty is, is if you look at one of those readers, whether it's a PoE or a Wi-Fi lock, it's the same components. So the reader is going to be the same. The lock body is going to be the same. The only difference is the actual controller. So when you think about stocking product, if you have Wi-Fi and PoE cylindrical locks in this case, if a reader goes out, the reader's the same. So you just have to replace the reader. You don't have to replace the whole lock itself. In addition, we have products. Uh, if you have an existing Von Duprin exit device, rim exit device, those are expensive. We don't wanna replace those. So if that's a need that you have, we have an option that you can take the reader, the controller and the electrified handle and just retrofit that and it'll cover up all existing holes. So now again, you're not having to buy all new hardware. You're just having to replace the, the smarts of that box. And then finally, the last product I want to speak to is the Passport 1000 series. So uh, in addition to having the card reader and the keypad, this has a mag stripe as well. So typically we see this in a campus setting. So it provides uh, simultaneous support of multiple credentials. So if you're migrating to a higher level of security or if you're migrating away from that mag stripe, but you still need it, we have an offering so you can future-proof yourself moving forward. So let's talk about some of our partners. Like I said, Asa Abloy is a hardware manufacturer. 
So here's a list of our partners that have integrations. And what I mean by integrations is uh, our Wi-Fi and our PoE locks can work with these partners. When it comes to the integrations, some have direct integrations, others require what's called the door service router. And in simple terms, the door service router is a translator between our locks and the access control software. Don't worry, if you didn't see your access control platform on that list, uh, please don't be shy, reach out to us still. In some applications, uh, we'll be able to still run middleware in between your access control platform to work with our Wi-Fi and PoE locks. Or uh, my slide honestly might not be up to date, so please uh, don't be shy, reach out. So with this DSR, it's, it's a middleware software that you're typically never gonna see. And it's gonna hold 120,024 uh, locks. And if you hit that limit, then you just move to another DSR running in the background. So really the, uh, the expandability of a system like this is endless. So following up with our partners, uh, I, I just showed you our access control partners. So these are the partners that write integration and anytime you have programming or software questions, uh, these are the team members you're gonna go to. In addition, they're also able to sell our product. They sell that to our certified integrators. So our certified integrators are currently the people that might be installing your access control system now if you have mag locks or electric strikes or any kind of electrified hardware. They also might be installing your fire alarms or burglar alarms, or maybe even pulling some of your data cables for your facility. And then finally, we have the preferred installer pro program. These are uh, certified locksmiths that go through a training on how to properly uh, install our lock sets. So be assured if somebody tells you they're an ASA Abloy partner, they've gone through hours of training and test taking, and they've been approved by the local teams to be able to support you through the whole process. So now that we have the hardware installed, you're either running on your existing Wi-Fi network or you have, uh, this is a new construction, so your lock sets are installed and your PoE cables are installed. Now your certified integrator is gonna program these locks. And I just wanna point out uh, some of the universal features that are really kind of a benefit to you. So I mentioned this privacy button. Each lock is configured to that specific location. So each lock in your facility can maximize what you're looking for. So if this particular door you want the privacy to work, that's fantastic. If you change your mind, it's simply going back into the lock and changing this setting by unclicking it. Next, when we talk about fail safe or fail secure, so when those batteries die or if the power goes out and that lock loses power, is it going to lock or is the lock going to unlock? Again, universal features. So the ability with this is uh, the lock programming itself is universal. And then the lock bodies are also universal. If you get a mortise lock and you order it in the wrong handing, you can switch that in the field. So what does that mean? Left less shelf stock. So now you're future proofing your system for components and space and the amount of money that you have to allocate for emergencies. Then just touching on uh, how we program it. So when I mentioned, for instance, the locks, the Wi-Fi lock initiates that communication. It's looking for the access control system. So think of a, a highway and the IP address here is gonna be that DSR or it's gonna be your access control system specifically. And this is the exit that that lock is going to look for every single time it gets on your network. And I'm sorry I didn't mention it before, but specifically when it comes to the Wi-Fi lock, a big question I get from IT quite a bit is uh, they're afraid that it's going to bog down their network. So these Wi-Fi locks just wake up 10, 15 seconds 
at a time, depending on when was the last time and how much information needs to get changed. And it's just a quick, almost like a text message communication back and forth. So it's in and out. So these, these Wi-Fi locks aren't living on their network. They're just hopping on, communicating and going dormant because they're self-contained units. So this IP address is where those locks are looking out to. And then when we talk about uh, DHCP or static IP addresses, you have that variant. So uh, if you're looking for more of a stringent IP tracking solution, we have that for you. Or if you're just looking for the flexibility of DHCP, that's an offering. And then with our Wi-Fi locks, if you see to the right, all the Wi-Fi encryptions that are currently available. So now when you're looking at the lock, not only is the lock universal, but now the Wi-Fi components are universal. So if you're on a specific WPA2 uh, security type right now, but you're looking to go to an enterprise level where you're possibly gonna use network certificates, now you're future-proofed because it's just a matter of going into that lock and changing those options. And then finally, talking about the reader. So as you can see here, I mentioned an HID multi-class reader. So if you currently have an HID wall reader, this is the exact same reader. The only difference is, is it's running on six AA batteries. So as you can see here, there's eight spots. So you can run all these technologies on the side up to eight simultaneously. So if you have a situation where you have an older uh, building that's still running low frequency technology, but sometimes they come to the newer one where majority of the people are running a newer credential, they still have that ability to be able to go through both paths and so as you migrate away from that lower credential and move to that credential you're gonna currently use, then you can go in and change the reader. It also has NFC and mobile capabilities and PIV for those government institutions like I mentioned before. So really the idea here is I'm trying to put across is the future proof and the universal capabilities of these locks. So finally, where do we go after this training? So here's another great uh, cheat sheet, as I call it. This, this highlights all of our technology. So our Perio and our integrated wired, our Wi-Fi, our PoE. So when you're just starting out the conversations, uh, talking about your facility and where you want to go and your needs, right? Always start with what are your pressing needs? This will aid uh, in helping you give direction. Each one of our brands have their own websites and they're fantastic. But if you're looking to specifically just look at our access control platforms, Intelligent Openings is a great place to start because it's a one-stop shop to be able to get you the information you need and direct you to the appropriate sites. Also, if you're uh, uh, an integrator or do access control and you're looking to possibly become a partner with Asa Aboy, this is a great start. You can come here and actually fill out a form and the local team will reach out to you and start that process with you. Another thing that can be found uh, on intelligent openings, the EAC configurator. So I have a order string listed there. These can be daunting. So the idea here is this is a step-by-step. -step. It walks you through, even if you don't know what you want yet, as long as you know the access control, and then it'll ask you, do you want wireless lockdown? Or is that not as important to you? Then it'll walk you through each step. In this case, when it's talking to you about finishes, it's actually gonna show you the finish of the hardware. So you'll be able to see it. And then when you're talking about levers, we have hundreds of levers. So you just pick the one you like. You don't have to worry about uh, what was the abbreviation for those. And then finally, once you get completed, you can download that into a PDF and save that and work with the local team. Or if you have an architect that you're working with, 
you can send that to the architect and say, this is the product we're looking at. And then the customer support app. This is an amazing app. It's free. It's for iOS and Android devices. But the beauty about this is like I mentioned, we have many companies and many websites. Uh, this too is a one-stop shop uh, for support, customer service and resource. So you open up this app and it's gonna have contact information for all of our uh, brands. It's gonna have email addresses, catalogs, installation instructions, the EAC configurators on there. So if you're doing a survey and walking around a facility, you can figure out that part number right then. And we're actively looking to build that resource library with videos for troubleshooting and installation, just to give you a better experience. And then finally, this is one of many amazing trainings that are actively going on. So please come back, check in often to see if there's a training that interest you. On behalf of the Academy, I would like to thank everyone for your time and participation. Have a good day. Great, thank you.